you join me in the boot of my car with a Sun computer? Let's take a closer look at this. So this is the Sun Microsystems Ultra 24. Nothing exotic, just a normal Intel workstation. Um, got your diagram there of everything inside, everything well labeled, massive extraction fan at the back. I assume that's where an asset tag went, so I'm going to clean up that goo a bit later. But all in all, a beautiful case. I know somebody built an AMD EPIC system into one of these not so long ago. This is the drive cage, and yeah, that hard drive is not installed correctly. You need caddies for them to go in there, but more on that later. Let's start cleaning up this bad boy. I'm not sure what glue they used there, but it permanently stained the case, but uh, it's an old computer. And this is one of the most dodgy connections I've seen, but I guess we'll have to investigate it. It's part of the fun. Thankfully, none of the damage on this case was deep or permanent so it could clean up easily so let's see if this will fire up very very loud fans I was hoping it would die down after a bit but that was not the case so it is alive we do have a dual core with 2 gigs of RAM and plenty of errors, including fan errors. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear the NVRAM. Um, I do have a core 2 quite to drop into this so we can remove that lousy old core 2 DO. Pop in a nice little quad. Cleaning with wet pipes, that's just the way the professionals do it man. Gonna clean up this cooler. It's a really nice cooler from AVC with a fan in the middle. First time I see a design like that, but it worked very, very well on this socket 775. Out with the old. In with the new. Well, not new. This is a, also an old processor, but at least it's quite core. Cool. Nice bit of heat paste. Back she goes. So I was hoping that doing this will resolve the errors with the coolers, but that was not the case. But I had to do that upgrade anyway, so why not? I mean, it's got a sticker in front that says "Core to Quad." Popping in the RAM, we're way up from two gigabytes to eight gigabytes now. The maximum the system can take. So there's a new processor, eight gigs of RAM but still no system health. So I removed the CMOS battery, of all things, and everything quieted down, the system monitoring came back. So I guess that was it then, just dodgy CMOS settings. So now let's have a look at the rest of the case, the hard drive not installed correctly. And getting the screw out was a real mission. You know I'm doing a good job when I get the pliers out. And here we go. This will make for a nice upgrade, little Western Digital solid state. But because I don't have the caddies, I'm just going to leave it there and yeah, nice, just leave it hanging. So I'm sure that's what SSDs are supposed to do. In case you haven't seen this in a while, an optical drive. We have to update the BIOS and I thought let's do it the old fashioned way off a DVD. That thing is nice. I uh, just like playing with it. The power supply is not the one that came with the system. Well, obviously not. It's got that hacky modification of a wire running into it. So let's see what's up with that. So it turns out it's the fan. Somebody replaced the fan, but instead of soldering it onto the board, they just ran a wire into the case. So that's another thing we can fix on this machine that we got. 
I didn't pay too much for this machine, it actually was very cheap, I think I paid about 500 bucks for it. So this is the one time where I'm actually not making a total loss. My soldering skills are terrible, but oh yeah, using the kitchen knife to snip off the extra bits, that's, that's cool. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a short circuit, worked fine, here we go, fans spinning at full speed. So for our cheaper power supply, that's as good as it's going to get. How to fix your broken warranty stickers? That's easy. If it wasn't there, then I guess it's always under warranty. So I just use this little scrapey thing to remove whatever there is there and then, yeah, wet wipe to do away with the rest of it. Good as new. And our power supply is back in. Let's do that BIOS update I was promising you. Good old MS DOS. And when I did the BIOS, the power went. Uh, this was load shedding. Thankfully, I had the machine on UPS, however, the monitor wasn't, but we didn't lose the machine. And I think it came out pretty well. Got Windows 10 running on it, so all is well. Looking mighty fine, the Ultra 24. So the next order of business was obviously replacing that dodgy power supply we have there. I went with the cheapest one I could find that was grey to match the case, I didn't want a black one. Um, so this grey one fits the case and actually looks like the original one. But it is still the cheapest power supply you can get. Let's just get it out of here and yeah, why not just wiggle it around. It's a rather hefty power supply for 350 watts, so I do believe it is actually the full 350 watt that it advertises. The ZA Tech, go local. Again, out with the old, in with the new, and this time it really was new. I think this power supply fits the case much nicer. That was al almost like honeycomb pattern ventilation holes. Nice. That's not so nice, but we'll get to that in a while. I managed to track down some hard drive brackets for this and ordered it, but yeah, that is a long story for later in this video. So I got a buyer that wanted a cheap socket 775 board and I thought, well, seeing as very little of this machine is actually original, I might as well just put in something that I can work with, so I went with a quad-core AMD, Athlon 2, and here it is, on the ECS motherboard, the black series, top of the line, and I'm going to test it the best way I know, that's by just getting some fake grass behind it, to, so that it reaches the power supply and doesn't short out, uh, okay, uh, that was not good. I'm not sure what was up with this board, it would not start, so I resorted to using that dodgy old power supply that we fixed the fan on, and then it miraculously started first time round. So I was like, what the hell? And I plugged back in the new power supply and it started working, so yeah. So many, many, many months passed, and somewhere in some stage of lockdown this showed up, ordered from Germany. It's those hard drive caddies that you need to put in hard drives and um, you know, I wanted to run this thing in RAID so I'm glad I got these two. The machine should have had the four original ones but you know, at the price I paid for it, I can't really complain about that. So this is really old um, 160 gig Seagates that I'm putting into the caddies and then we're going to run this in RAID 0. rather clunky to install them, but at least they are secure. Just gonna change the SATA to do RAID and then set up our RAID array. Two discs are picked up nicely, just doing boring RAID stuff over here. Now for SATA 1, or as you can see they 1.5 gigabit a second, they really function well, you can hear them chirping away there. 
And all in all, this machine turned out pretty well, except for the missing IO back play, but so be it. So guys, that was the build of my Sun computer. I really enjoyed this machine. I actually made a profit on this machine. Um, and yeah, it was fun. See you all in the next video, I guess. New videos every whenever I make one.